What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be breaking down how Ike Maquano is almost a perfect fit for the New York Jets at the fourth overall pick. We're going to be going over the arguments about his position, what the Jets actually need at tackle, and why he is a perfect fit. But make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I want to give a quick thank you. The videos have been doing really well recently, and I'll continue to post off-season videos. Ike McQuano is a tackle out of North Carolina. He played at Mississippi, and he finished with a 91.6 grade in 2021 as the starter at left tackle. Now he is 6'4", 320, and he, he is a red shirt sophomore. Now, most of his position snaps and alignments have been at left tackle throughout his entire college career, though he did play left guard last year. This year, he was by far the best run blocking graded player out of the class. And on tape, he showed excellent ability at both right guard and left guard in run blocking and pass blocking, even though he is less polished than some of the great pass blockers in this relatively well often in the relatively good off in the line class guys such as Charles Cl Cross and Evan Neal he is by far the best run blocker he even though he's 3264 he's got an ideal frame for guard and most of his comparisons are guys like Collegio Semeli and primary interior guards and then some smaller tackles now in a lot of the clips you're going to see He's just completely leveling guys, especially once he gets to the second level, which he does pretty often, especially in, in the run game. He's just flattening these defensive backs in, and linebackers. And when he gets in the second level, for example, one of the screen plays, he's an automatic mismatch for anyone that's under 250. He's just going to move you out of the way. He's got excellent, strong hands, and he's got a good wingspan, especially for his height, 6'4". Now, a specific highlighted game that most film watchers will watch is the game against Clemson in Week 4, which is by far his probably his best game on tape against one of the top teams in the nation at that time. As you're going to see in this clip, once again, on the screenplay, just anybody under his size is just a complete, utter mismatch for him. And then another great in pass pro, maybe a hold, but in the next clip... He's just pancaking one of the best defensive tackles, Brian Brees, who's probably going to be a first-round pick next year. And overall, he was probably the best performing tackle other than Evan Neal this year in college football. He carried that man off screen. Now, for the clips for this part, I'm going to be using a classic Brian Baldinger episode of the Jets. And now this episode went over the run scheme. And we all know the jet the Jets run scheme is a zone or is an outside zone run scheme primarily used by the San Francisco 49ers. And one important fact about the about the Jets run scheme is that Elijah Varick Tucker was the main component of the run scheme, getting out to the second level, uh, m being the pole blocker on the majority of the blocks, and just the tackles essentially holding their ground. Now with, Ike Mukwanu, he fits the run game almost perfectly, almost, or especially at the guard guard and tackle position. He's just a mauler, and we all saw what Makai Becton did last year in this run in the run game scheme last year. He opened up the entire offense. So with Ike Mukwanu, Makai Becton, and Elijah Vera Tucker, who are all run game specialists, it's going to be a pretty nasty offensive line. And I'll let Tom McShay take this one away. Jets, and there is going to be a theme around the New York Jets this offseason that is get Zach Wilson help. We started this show talking about how Jacksonville needs to get Trevor Lawrence, the former number one overall pick help. The Jets need to get the former number two overall pick help in Zach Wilson. We're going to go with Ika Mekwanu, the nasty, nasty tackle from NC State. He is probably the best run blocker in this entire draft. He's not as clean in pass protection as Ed Neal, who went number one overall. But his ability to finish blocks, as you see right there in the run game, it is tremendous. It's, it's as good as it gets. He, can, he has enough explosive range to play in an outside zone scheme, which is what the New York Jets are going to run. They want to get that ground and pound going 
Once again, it's a little similar to Trevor Lawrence. They want to get that ground and pound going and build a vertical play action pass game for Zach Wilson to throw the ball down the field. Equanu is a high floor player that's plug and play. I think he can transition inside to guard if they need him to, if they like George Fant and Mekhi Becton starting at tackle next year. But obviously he has a great resume playing left tackle for NC State this year. So so we all know that Mekhi Becton dislocated his knee and missed the entire season last year. And there have been some rumors about him either getting traded and a good portion of the Jets' mock drafts have been Ika McClano at four as the Jets are in, posi- in a position to take either the top edge or the top tackle. Now, do I think these trade rumors are warranted? They could be. Mekhi Becton is, almost, is somewhat labeled now as lazy as the progress just kept on getting inhibited due to his weight and for a lack of a better term he was out of shape coming into training camp this year now we know what happened to Mekhi Becton this year but what about his replacement George Fant who we signed last year to a three-year 29 million dollar deal now he allowed 18 pressures this year and he only allowed one sack in basically a full year at left tackle, replace him Kai Becton. And he was, quite honestly, really good at the position. He had his first breakout year at 30 years old. Now, this is his last year of his contract. There were rumors about him getting a contract exception. It seems that there is no validity to that either. But needless to say, the rumors will spread. But also, there is a validation to the claim that Mekhi Becton will have to beat out George Fant for the starting position at left tackle. Uh, I had a similar conversation last year about my uh, video on Panay Sewell and how the Jets shouldn't really take him at two. And it was basically about how Mekhi Becton had a really good year at left tackle and he shouldn't be replaced. But now, since then, Mekhi Becton missed basically all of last year. Left tackle position is up for grabs. And maybe Ike McQuano could even grab that. To recap, I think Ike McQuano is almost a perfect fit especially scheme-wise. I just think the situation for the Jets having two very good tackles who have produced could uh, hinder maybe his ability to start right away at tackle, but he has definite guard flexibility, and if you decide not to re-sign George Fant, you could put him or Mekhi Becton at right tackle, and you have your two two tackles locked up, and you have one of the best run-blocking schemes and run blocking games in the NFL. Now, I would be definitely on board for the Ika Mokwanu. I'm on the Ika Mokwanu train, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to subscribe. Thank you for the recent love and post a mock draft soon.